Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ambassador Arikana Chiumbari Kwao. Uh, I am speaking to you because unfortunately I was not able to attend uh, this amazing event that's taking place tonight. My sincere apologies. Um, let me start by uh, thanking and acknowledging my sister Lady Alicia, uh, Dr. Ambassador Clyde Rivers, uh, Dr. Hall, for putting this amazing, amazing event together. This is indeed uh, a historic moment when we are looking to the issues of going back home through African League. As you all know, regardless of how we got here, whether we came across the oceans in shackles or we came voluntarily uh, in search of greener pastures, the reality is, as people of African descent, we must connect with our motherland. I often say, having lived in this country as long as I have, I admire how other races have been able to reconnect with their anchor. You see, with the exception of the uh, American Indians, everyone in this great country of the United States has their primary anchor outside the United States. The Jews are proud of their primary anchor. The Irish, the Chinese, the Indians, the Mexicans, they are all proud of their countries of origins. The only people who are busy running away from their primary anger are people of African descent. That saddens me, and that needs to change. You see, you have to understand that over the years, we black people have been lied to. We have been told our continent is a diseased and dying continent. We have been told not to go to our continent that is constantly at war with itself. While some of that may be true, but the bigger picture is, you, people of African descent, you are inheritors of one of the most amazing continent on earth, the richest continent, the continent that the rest of the world is going to for everything and anything the world needs. That is your inheritance, that is, your home. And if that is not good enough reason for you to stand on the tallest mountain and proclaim to the world who you are, I don't know what is. And of course, don't let me forget that life as we know it began in Africa. That without the African, there will not be any other races. And that is huge. It's a truth that quite often is never highlighted, but the onus is on us to highlight that truth that all life began in Africa, and that when it's all said and done, we are all Africans. That Africa is where it's at. That Africa is the next frontier. As we look into the era of the African continental free trade area, where our beloved continent is going to the world as the sleeping giant that is rising, it is time that we, children of Africa, unite so we can take our motherland to a rightful place on the world stage. That means you, the child of Africa, must understand that as we speak, the reason we struggle with the issues of identity, issues of believing in ourselves, let alone each other, is because to a great extent we are still suffering from the legacy of slavery and the legacy of colonization. We must accept that we are suffering from this affliction. I often say, Unless you realize you're sick, how do you seek healthcare? Let's accept that we're suffering from this affliction. Let's begin to have a serious conversation with the image in the mirror and ask ourselves the very difficult questions. Difficult, but important questions nonetheless. Are you colonized? Are you suffering from the legacy of slavery? And if you are, you need to begin that journey of healing. Let me keep it real simple for some of you who may not know whether or not you're suffering from this disease. You've often heard of how the white man's ice is colder. Why is that? If I were to put two black men in one room with a white man, you see how quickly the two black men will try to create an alliance with the, black, with the white man and completely distance themselves from each other. Let's turn it into another room. There are two 
Caucasian guys and one black man. See how quickly the two Caucasians will create an alliance with each other and completely distance the black man out. It's called survival of the fittest. That is something that we have failed to cultivate among ourselves as black people. The appreciation and understanding that our sheer survival depends on our unity. So what my sister and Dr. Eric Hall and Dr. Clyde Rivers are trying to do is put us on a path that we can go back home. Now, I have a different take. Because while we say yes, we need DNA testing, I happen to believe that if you identify yourself as a black person anywhere on earth, you are an African. And Africa is saying, welcome home. Yes, DNA testing for some is good. You want to know what tribe you came from. But when it's all said and done with the protocols of free, free movement of people that are in the process of being ratified, Africans on the continent are soon going to be free to live and work wherever they choose on the continent. I do believe that when we come together and we get the African diaspora sex region as a decision from the African heads of states, we should also make sure that we ask that our brothers and sisters, descendants of former slaves, are not left out in that conversation. They too should be able to participate in the vibrancy of our new African continent. They too should be able to have that African passport. They too should be able to say, I am an African and I am from this particular country, but I claim all of Africa as my home. So for that to happen, we have to have a change of mindset. We have to realize we have the shackles of the mind that arrive and well today. Until that happens, our realization and the creation and the building of an Africa that we want will always be a dream. I do not think that is what you want. So as time goes on, we're going to be reaching back out to you we are, we are putting in place mechanisms where we're going to have a database that we can list all of us, who we are, where we live, our professionals, our businesses. So when the continental projects are being rolled out, we want to be able to have you be on the table. We want you to be the first one to have the first right of refusal. That can only happen when we come together. So. To the honorees who are going to receive awards today, I want to say congratulations for the job well done. You deserve it. To my sister Alicia, to Dr. Rivers, and Dr. Hall, keep up the good work. We applaud you for keeping us connected. We applaud you for reminding us who we are. And I want you to know in my own personal capacity, I support you fully. And if there's anything I can do to move the agenda forward, you can always count on me. Congratulations once again.